The guitar has a range from about 82 cycles per second down here on the low E string to about B equals 988 cycles per second at the 19th fret on the high E string. This is on the classical 19 fret guitar. On the low E string, you got 19 frets plus the open string equals 20 notes. And then adding up all the new notes, which are within about four or five frets, uh, you now get a total of 44 notes, 44 individual notes. If you look at the entire fretboard, you got about 116 places to play 44 notes. So you got 44 individual notes, and all the rest are duplicates. On a piano, you got 88 keys, uh, 88 notes, no duplicates. Everything moves from left to right, raises the pitch a half, uh, half tone or a semitone. On the guitar, the duplicates run diagonally. Uh, the middle C splits the fretboard in half. On a 20 fret guitar, there would be five duplicate middle C notes. The F notation is an easier read and makes a much better match with the keyboard than it does with the guitar. I'll show you why. Take the middle part of the keyboard, which is the range of the guitar. Turn that on its side and extend out the uh, white keys of the piano there in lines. And then you can do alternate uh, lines. And you can see that each line and each space represents a white key on the uh, keyboard. For piano and vocals, the G clef on the staff represents G above middle C. And that's a frequency of about 392 cycles per second. For the guitar, it'd be about 196 cycles per second. And that's a perfect fourth below middle C. Uh, the treble clef for the guitar should have an 8 written underneath it to indicate it's an octave lower than the uh, treble clef for the piano. Uh, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. If guitarists followed the rules, they'd be trombone players in the march and band. You have to follow the rules there. This is the only book I've got. I started studying. I was studying around 1980 when I got these books and what have you. And this is the only book that has an eight underneath the, the treble stuff. Yeah, this was my starting book, 700 Years of Music. Uh, Andre Segovia, uh, that was another book. He never used it. Uh, this book I got for more popular approach. It doesn't have it. What I learned, what I did, I did a patterns the same way like most guitarists learn. These are my patterns from the uh, Segovia scales. And you learn where to put your finger and uh, you go from there. <laughs> uh, phrases like this, uh, written an octave higher than it sounds, uh, sounds an octave lower than written, uh, I've always found more confusing than helpful. It all depends on whether you're a uh, pianist reading guitar music or a guitarist reading piano music, and the meaning changes, and uh, they're very difficult to understand sometimes. Middle C for the piano can be written on the grand staff off to the left there, either one ledger line below the G clef, or here, uh, one ledger line above the F clef. But wherever it is written, it can only be played on one key on the piano. Reading this music for guitar on the right here, uh, guitar notation is played an octave lower than written. To a pianist, it would mean uh, play middle C, an octave lower. To a guitarist reading guitar music, it would mean play a C below middle C. I, it just doesn't quite make sense. You know, you stop and you think and basically say, I'm going to read tablature. Uh, this statement, the guitar notation sounds an octave lower than written, uh, it sounds so similar to the previous statement that it causes confusion just by itself. A guitarist reading the notation to the right there would think that it's playing middle C, that's like just what it's supposed to do. Uh, but a keyboardist, a vocalist, to them, it looks so similar to the grand staff to the left there, they would almost automatically be thinking that looks like a C above middle C. So that uh, statement would make more sense to them. And another way I've seen it stated, a guitar notation is written an octave higher than it sounds. Again, that would make sense to a pianist or a vocalist. Uh, to a guitarist, you would look at that and say, well, maybe I just stick with the Nashville notation or something like that. 
And this statement, guitar notation, is played an octave higher than written. It actually doesn't make any sense to me at all, but it sounds very similar to the previous ones. Leaves me really confused, leaves me thinking maybe I should just stick with chord diagrams. A lot of people do. Now back to the G clef. Written for guitar, it would look like this with an 8 underneath it. That indicates an octave lower than it's usually written. And uh, these are various ways you can uh, write the guitar notation. Uh, the number in parentheses would be the string. The number above it is the finger you use to hold the string against the fretboard. And the Roman numerals are down below there. When you need them, they indicate the number of the fret. This would be the 5th fret, 10th fret, 15th fret. Now the staff on the left there doesn't tell you where to play that note. The staff and tablature on the right does tell you where to do it. The tablature, I think, it may simplify it a little bit. And uh, the fretboard itself shows you where those notes are, but it doesn't give you the time in which to play them. It doesn't give you the sequence. Uh, if you are a guitarist reading music you know is written for piano or voice, maybe there's definitely no aid under the treble clef. Uh, there's maybe a grand staff. You would play a G above middle C. That's uh, 392 cycles per second. On the guitar, you could play it in any one of, uh, what, about uh, four places here. And uh, you would have to notate that. And here's the uh, complete range of the guitar compared to the uh, keyboard. Here's the notes. And let's just play them. You can see that each white key on the piano is represented there on the staff. So the staff represents the white keys of the piano until you put in a ledger, uh, an accidental. We're not going to do that just yet. Take a little closer look at this. So you can see that each line uh, represent each line and each space represents a white key on the piano. You can also do that with the frequencies. Same thing. Now here is some more on the difference between the music notation for guitar and keyboard. Starting with the grand staff of piano, the wide space in the middle allows for extra ledger lines for the left and right hands. If we're thinking about uh, individual frequencies, individual separate frequencies, there is only a middle C line between the two staffs. You move the F and G clef closer together, middle C in the middle, you extend uh, the range with the ledger lines, and now the grand staff represents three octaves centered right around middle C of the piano. And this is how I learned the names of the lines and spaces. You can see uh, how they match up uh, to the white keys of the piano. Just about an octave and a half on either side of that middle C. Now you've got a, a line or space for each white key of the piano. The black keys are not represented until you put in a sharp or flat in the key signature. There are so many ledger lines that they can't be read easily. So you raise or lower the last octave or two and put an 8 or an 8VE or an 8VA with a dashed line over or under them. And that indicates those notes are played an octave higher or lower depending on where they are. The guitar is right in the middle there. That's the range of the guitar. The guitar has about half as many notes as the piano, so you can eliminate one of those clefs and make it a little bit easier to read. Get rid of the F clef entirely and drop the G clef down an octave. You have to drop all the lines and spaces as well to keep the G clef centered on a line. Yeah, sometimes they'll uh, write an 8VA over that last octave of uh, ledger lines there meaning those notes are played an octave higher than they are written. When you alter the staff with a sharp or flat, you play not the white key, but the black key adjacent. Here, the first space on the staff indicates not F, but F sharp. Quick look at the difference between the grand staff for piano on the left there, and the staff entablature for guitar on the right. Uh, you can see that the 
staff indicates what to play, what pitch or frequency, and that can be used by any instrument. And on the staff and tablature to the right there, the uh, tablature, which is the lower six lines on that uh, section there, uh, they represent the strings, and that indicates where to play, what string and fret. The uh, staff above it indicates what pitch, the same as the grand staff, except that it's written an octave lower than the grand staff pitches are. The string names and numbers are not usually written alongside like that, the 8 underneath the treble clef there should be there. It tells the uh, pianists and uh, virtually every other instrumentalist that uh, the G, the second line from the bottom there, indicates G below middle C, whereas about 80 million times a day they see it, it means uh, G above uh, middle C. Uh, sometimes it can be left off, uh, so you should see it in your uh, mind's eye, certainly hear it in your mind's ear, and uh, be aware of the difference uh, from a, a pianist's point of view and a guitarist's point of view. The tablature down below will tell a guitarist exactly where to play and what pitch, and that'll give, give him what pitch to play, uh, but it will not tell a pianist or a singer anything. Usually uh, the guitarist can read the tab, but he can't read the staff above. And uh, instrumental, other instrumentalists can read the staff, but not the tab. To tell the two systems apart, the tablature on the right has a very thick vertical line called the bracket. Has the word letters T A B. The line, the six lines on the bottom are separated a little bit further usually, and the G clef atop indicates G uh, below middle C. The grand staff to the left over there for piano, uh, that has a F clef on the bottom with the uh, symbol with the two dots on either side of the F below middle C. And the uh, brace on the left there holds the two parts together. The G clef above uh, on the top staff indicates the G above middle C. Again, the range of this six-string classical guitar is from about 82 cycles per second to about 988 cycles per second on the 19th fret. A steel string with 20 frets would be maybe one note higher. 22 frets with an electric guitar would be three notes higher. Now, the vocal range matches this almost exactly. Here's operatic simplified two octave ranges. Uh, actual ranges vary considerably. And uh, there's almost no agreement on this, but uh, this is giving a good idea of where the vocal ranges are. The C's are the uh, vocal, are the octave uh, designations on a piano. It's one of many. Uh, here's bass. Here's it is on the staff. Here it is on the keyboard, and here it is on the guitar. You can see that the the, fret, the keyboard goes left to right one after the other, all the notes. And the staff here is just showing you the extremes, the uh, low and high notes of the range. Uh, and on the guitar you have these squiggles. I don't know what to call them. Baritone, tenor, contralto, mezzo soprano, soprano. There you go. And uh, here, let's uh, take a look. This is uh, the operatic uh, thing, with what they call tessitura matters, which is how comfortable the person is singing within the range. They can reach higher, maybe they can reach lower, maybe they can do both, uh, but they are comfortable at a certain area of that uh, range. Uh, in choral music, which has soprano, alto, tenor, and bass only, they don't worry so much about the uh, tessitura. Tenor? Alto and soprano. Here's the six categories of the operatic version in close up. I think they're good for um, your singing and, of course, for uh, your instrumentalist. It helps you uh, know where you are on your instrument. Bass. Baritone.
Tanner. Lancelto. Ezzo soprano. Soprano. Mm. 